In this video, I'll describe the reasoning of hypothesis testing. When you visit your local ice cream shop, you'd like to get one scoop of chocolate ice cream. The workers have been trained to measure their scoops precisely. They're each supposed to be four ounces, but you think the scoops look pretty large, so you decide to weigh the ice cream. And you do this each of the 10 times you visit the ice cream shop. And after converting from grams to ounces, you get an average of 4.6 ounces. So what do you think about the shop's claim that each of their scoops weighs 4 ounces? Pause the video and think about what you would conclude. Now, if the average had been exactly 4 ounces, you wouldn't have doubted the claim. And if the average had been 9.2 ounces, you probably would have doubted the claim. And this is the basic reasoning behind hypothesis testing. You ask yourself, is the observed statistic different enough from the claimed weight that you would doubt the claim? Another way to think about it is that an average of 9.2 ounces is strong evidence against the claim. An average of 4 ounces is not evidence against the claim. And, well, what about the 4.6 ounces? Now, you would expect there to be a bit of variation from scoop to scoop. Some are going to be a little larger than the average, and some are going to be a little smaller. And since you only got 10 scoops, you would also expect some variation from one 10-scoop sample to another 10-scoop sample. So you'd need to know how much sampling variation there is. That is, if you were at an ice cream shop that really did have 4-ounce scoops, and you got 10 scoops and computed their average weight, you might get exactly 4 ounces. And if you looked at another set of 10 scoops, you might get a little above 4 ounces, and another might be a little below 4 ounces. And if you looked at a thousand sets of 10 scoops, you would have a sense of how much variation there might be from set to set. And from such an ice cream shop, getting a 10 scoop average of 4.6 ounces might be a little surprising. But if the ice cream shop had a little more variation, then maybe it would be less surprising to get a 4.6 ounce average. And this surprisingness is something we can quantify using probability. Specifically, we could compute the probability that a shop with 4-ounce scoops would produce 10 scoops with a 4.6-ounce average. If this probability is small, then this is evidence that they're not really 4-ounce scoops. This probability is central to making statistical inferences, so it has a special name. It's a probability value, so it's called a p-value. Now, let's summarize the reasoning we've seen here. We had an ice cream shop that claimed to serve 4-ounce scoops. You weighed 10 scoops. If you got an average of 9.2 ounces, this seems like strong evidence against the claim of 4-ounce scoops. If you got an average of 4.0 ounces, that would be no evidence against the claim. And 4.6 ounces might be moderate evidence against the claim. And we can formalize this, the strength of evidence, with the p-value, which is a probability that measures the strength of evidence against the claim. And this overall reasoning is central to making statistical inferences.